Okay, this is exercise three of a uh, introduction to parametric modeling. So the task this week was to produce the component here, a model of the component, and on the second section of the lab to produce the 2D manufacturing drawing that we see here. So let's get started into SolidWorks where we start a new part and we're going to start modeling that geometry. So we start off as usual with a sketch. We pick our work plane and this time we're going to use the, the front work plane. Uh, we pick the, the circle sketch tool, any size again and don't forget about our smart dimensions. So we smart dimension the circle here, 100 millimeters and exit sketch. We now go to extrude the feature and we extruded a distance of 15 millimeters. Uh, in this instance, we'll just do a blind extrusion. Uh, there's no advantage of doing mid plane. Now we keep producing the component, we keep sketching on the new faces that we formed. So for this instance here, I'm going to hit the, the normal 2 button again and sketch again on the origin and put a smart dimension on it yet again. 15 millimeters. And exit sketch. And again, we extrude. And this time it's a distance of 20 millimeters. Remember, we can always go back and edit the distance if we get it wrong. So uh, don't worry about putting in the wrong distance the first time. The next step to do the draft of the component here, if we just click back to the 2D drawing, is to produce this feature here, which is the, the tapered end of the shaft. Okay, and we can see from the drawing here it's 30 millimeters, or sorry, 30 degrees of a draft uh, down to a diameter of 25 millimeters. So it's going from 30 millimeters or 50 millimeters here to 25 at a 30 degree angle. So if we go back to SolidWorks, we're going to sketch on, the, on this right plane here. So we hit sketch and we'll hit our normal 2 button again. So we're looking straight in. Let's flip it around the other side. Well, if we hit normal 2 again, I'll flip it around this, maybe the same orientation as the 2D drawing so we don't get confused. So I'm simply going to draw a line from the midpoint, out of distance, any distance again, up any size, back to the top corner. Important there to add the relation there at, at the point and back down to start again. Now we go to our smart dimensions uh, and this dimension here it was diameter 25 which is 12.5 of radius and the angle here is important so just select the two lines and it's 30 degrees total which will leave half of it here as 15 degrees. Now our top end here is already constrained so that will give us a diameter of 50 here which is fine and we, we're going to revolve this now around the center line here of the sketch that we've done. So it's a closed sketch and exit sketch again when we're happy with that. You can see the sketch here is on our feature manager added to it and if we go to features now we're going to go to revolve uh, revolve boss base and we're going to select this bottom line. If we select this bottom line it'll know we want to rotate about it and there's the preview there showing the volume and we can hit OK. Uh, the next quick feature we're going to do is basically the undercut and the threaded portion, which is down here. So we basically go in again, we're going to sketch in that face. Uh, it's good to look normal too constantly so you don't make a mistake. And all your features are about the origin, which is our red arrow here. So again, we're looking to put on an M22 thread. So we might do an undercut of diameter 19. I'm going to extrude that again, just three millimeters. And we'll go further on now to do the threaded portion. Again, keeping the normal two there, so we don't make any mistakes. And this time it's going to be diameter 22. So it's fine to draw the circle out larger and then bring it down with the smart dimension to the correct size. Exit sketch again, features extrude, and again, we're just extruding that uh, 20 millimeters and accept. So just the raw form of the this portion of the component. We'll, uh, 
we're going to insert our cosmetic threads here so if we go insert annotations and cosmetic thread so just take my take a second to load up we we pick an edge that we want to tread on to start on and the standard is very important here we pick iso standard and it's a machine treads and it's an m22 so we just pick m22 for today and up to next we can give or we can give a blind which would be 20 millimeters of depth and we have a, a tread call out here which will be used again in the manufacturing drawn and we can hit okay there now you can see that the tread has been added here the cosmetic tread but you can't visually see it uh, and if we check under the boss extrude we can see it's been added just to to highlight that or to show it we can go into tools options it's not usually turned on document properties two tabs here document properties and detailing and to switch on shaded cosmetic threads and hit OK and we can see it just gives a a kind of a representation of threads it's not actually threads but it gives a representation but it will allow us to uh, once we put on those cosmetic thread if we look at our our 2D drawing it will give us this detail here which is a proper uh, draft and standard for showing machine threads so just quickly go on to the other side of the component uh, we can just start modeling the features there as such so we have a again repeating this sketch command constantly with the circles to build up our shape so just drag that circle a bit larger put on a smart dimension accept the smart dimension and again we're extruding again so it's just five millimeters of a small boss here and hit OK and again we have another uh, kind of a, an undercut here each side of the spline so we'll talk about the spline in a moment uh, it's a smaller dimension diameter which is just 30 exit the sketch again and features extrude and just it's eight millimeters of an undercut so just look now we're going to draw the portion <coughs> that is for the the spline so this is the spline shaft here and we're going to basically draw the, the base blank of that the smaller diameter and then we're going to add one tooth and, and revolve it so let's have a look quick look at that so the base cylinder if you like it's just going to be a circle and the diameter of that is 42 millimeters and exit the sketch and we're going to extrude that its total length which is which is 35 millimeters and accept that okay so we have the blank done at this point it might be a good idea to save the actual file and i'm just going to call it the, remember using a part number and hit save make sure you know where you're saving it and it should be in your exercise tree folder and give it a part number hit save so once our work is saved we have it saved on a part number so we won't lose it which is good uh, so quickly moving on to the we'll finish the last maybe extrusions here so we can do another sketch again on the face another circle make sure we snap on that origin if you want to use the normal two do uh, put the diameter of that which is 25 accept it exit the sketch again features extrude and we extrude this a total of uh, 35 millimeters and the final thing i'm going to do here on, on, on the extrusion is uh, just a sketch on the face and this is actually a square feature here so if we use the center rectangle tool and again any once it's on the origin any size 12 by 12 this feature and it's extruded as well 12 millimeters so there's the base outline of the component we'll not add any fillets to the very end uh, we'll look now at, at drawing the splines in so first of all what we're going to do is basically we're, we're going to draw one tooth and revolve it so we're going to sketch it on this face here and we'll definitely have to look normal too in this instance so we're looking straight in at the component and, and this is the edge here 
I want to pick up on. So I can spin it here, it's this edge here, which is very important. So look to normal two, and that's the edge there. So what I can do is I can draw a center line from the center straight up, and I can convert entities here. So I'm going to convert this circle into a, a this edge into a circle in my sketch. So you can see the heavier black line here. And the advantage of doing that is that the, the sketch of the circle is associated or linked to the to the cylinder. So if the cylinder moved in size, it would also move in size. So I'm just quickly going to draw the shape of the tooth here. Another line over here. Any size. Again, sorry. I'm going to use a trim tool in a minute, so any size. And again, another circle from the center on up. So the size of this here is its diameter 48 on the outside. So we can punch that in. And the width of the tooth. Now the tooth has to be symmetrical about the center line. So if we select the line, hold control, select the center line and the, the third line, we have a pop-up here and we can actually add a relation which makes them symmetrical. So they're after being symmetrical and there's the relation added. So I'm just going to do a, a distance now and the size of the tooth, the width of the actual tooth is a uh, So it's eight millimeters wide, the tooth. And now we're just quickly going to do a power trim, trim entities, and use the power trim. And anywhere this we gray line touches, it's going to cut. So be careful of it and trim it back there. So that's the, the, the sketch created for the tooth. And hit OK. And exit sketch. Now I'm going to go features, extrude boss again, flip the direction. And this time instead of going blind, we're going to go up the surface. And I'm actually going to pick the back surface of the part here. So it means the tooth will always be equal to the cylinder length, which is handy if you change the length of the spline. So there's the feature added there. It's boss extrude number 10. And finally, for the spline, we're going to do a circular pattern. I've already got the boss pre-selected, so it knows I want to uh, pattern around this boss, the tooth. And my parameter here is the rotation center. So I can pick any cylinder. I pick this cylinder here. Just put in the right number of splines, which in this instance is 6 and accept it. So this the splines completed. So that wraps up maybe part one. I'm just going to put a, post another video with extra detail in the, the holes and the fillets and the keyways. So that's the first part completed.